Hi, I'm Steve Kaplan. In this edition of PSD Tuts, we're going to be looking at how to make the simplest kind of 3D objects. And we'll start off with a 3D postcard. So here's a postcard I prepared earlier. Welcome to Photoshop in 3D. So let's see how we can turn this into a 3D object and view it from a different angle. Well, as is so often the case in Photoshop, there are two ways of going about it. We can go up to the 3D menu, choose New Mesh from Layer, and then pull out to Postcard. Alternatively, we can simply open our 3D panel, and in here we can say we want to build a 3D postcard, and then click the Create button to go ahead and make it. So let's do that. And here's our result. Now, I can tell, so far you're a little underwhelmed. You're thinking, OK, well, we've got this uh, new view that's appeared on the side, but in what sense is this a 3D object? Well, what happens now is when we select the Move tool, that gives us our 3D rotation tool. And when we now click and drag inside this layer, you can see this really is a 3D object. And we can turn it around. When we turn it down to the side, you can see it's a 3D object with height and width, but no depth. In other words, it has an x-axis, a y-axis, but in the z-axis, there's nothing there. And that's why it's called a postcard. It behaves just like a postcard. As we're moving it around, you can see the whole 3D environment is moving around with it. And that's because we dragged on the whole scene rather than just on the object. If we instead drag on the object itself, it gets this faint yellow box over it. And now we can move it around in this scene, and as long as it's selected, we can move it independently of that background. As we do so, you can also see it moving up in the secondary view. And this gives us another viewpoint on the object we're working on. We could choose to view this from the top, from the right, from the front, and so on. Let's go back to our top-down view. As we drag this object around, as we manipulate it, you can see it moving in that view. So the 3D object, absolutely the simplest kind of object to make in Photoshop. Let's look at something now a little bit more complicated. We'll hide that, and we'll take another copy of the same layer. And let's wrap this artwork around a cube. So once we've selected Cube Wrap, we can go ahead and create it. And there is our object. If we click on it, we can now turn it around and see it has put that artwork on every face of our cube. Now the problem is, our artwork didn't start off square. It was a rectangle. But as we've made a cube, it had to make each face square. And what we need to do now is to make it smaller in the height so that it comes back to being the same kind of proportions as the original. Well, as well as clicking on the object to move it around, we can use this 3D controller that appears in the middle. And we have three controls for each axis. The top one moves the object along that axis. So here I am dragging it along the y-axis. The next one down rotates it around the plane of that axis. So rotating it on the y-plane effectively means rotating it around the z-axis. And you can see that's showing in a little pop-up help. The one below that scales it. So when we scale it along the y-axis, it's making this cube shorter and now we can see we're getting a much more a convincing view of these sides because they now match the proportions of the original artwork. So a very easy way to make a cube out of our object. Let's look at something else we can do. We'll take another copy of this. And this time, let's see if we can turn this into... Um, a soda can. So we'll choose soda and let's click on create. And now there is our artwork 
wrapped around the soda can. Except, well, it really hasn't done it very well. It has got it uh, sideways, it's much too big, it doesn't fit the can properly. There's an awful lot about this that we could make rather better. Let's move it over to the side, and for now, let's put away this 3D secondary view. If we want to work on the texture as it's wrapped around this, we have to look at the Layers panel. Here's our object, Photoshop in 3D Copy 2, and the label is the material we want to work on. So if we double-click on this, it opens up in a new window. Let's zoom out a bit to make it a little smaller. Now, when Photoshop makes a 3D object from a layer, and it wraps that layer around it, it does it in a slightly unpredictable way. So we've really got to guess at how to make this fit the can better. Well, we can see it sideways going up the can, so let's start by rotating it. We'll go into Free Transform, make it smaller, rotate it, and now make it bigger again so it just matches the height of this object. And we'll click on Enter to apply that transformation. Now, what we've opened here is a PSB document. And PSB is an internal file format that Photoshop uses for layers that it's included, in this case, inside a 3D object. And in order to apply any changes here to the object, we need to save it. We go to the File menu and choose Save. OK, so we can see now it has put this right down the bottom here. It's turned it round by 90 degrees, but actually this is the bottom of the object and it's the wrong way up. So let's go back into it. We can use Free Transform again and turn it round the other way. And let's now drag it over to the right. And when we choose Save again, that's looking a bit better. We can drag it all the way to the right, choose Save again, and that's looking better still. Let's just bring it down a little way. There's always a bit of trial and error when you're trying to match a texture. And that's not bad. Fraction more, Save, and we'll say that's OK. So we can now close this window. Here's our can, and as we turn it around, you can see we've got this beautifully wrapped around this can. If we were designing a real can, of course, then we'd adjust our lettering so that it fit within the face of it, so that when we're looking at the front of the can, we could see all the lettering rather than just a bit of it. But you get the idea. We've managed to take our flat artwork and wrap it into this can shape. And that's a pretty good starting point. Let's now look at one more way of creating a 3D object from our layer. So we'll take yet another copy of our postcard. And this time, I want to create a mesh from our depth map. And you're saying, well, what's a depth map? What does that mean? Well, the easiest way of finding out is simply to create it. So let's experiment and click the Create button. OK, now that's looking pretty weird. What on earth is going on here? Well, if we turn it round and view this from the side, we get a slightly better idea. We can see just about the words Welcome To sticking out at the top of this object. And why have they done that? They've done that because they were white. When you create a depth map, anything that's white is high, anything that's black appears low, and you can see the dark areas have gone really quite low here. And anything that's grey is somewhere in between high and low. Now, it's very hard to see what's going on as we're working from this postcard. So let's hide this one and have a look at another layer. And this one I've created specially to demonstrate this technique. We have the word high in white, the word low in black, on a grey background. When we now choose to make a mesh from this depth map and click on Create, we can see much more clearly what's going on. 
the word high is sticking forwards. Because it's white, it appears high. Our grey is just over half the way back in the object, and that's because it's slightly darker than 50%. The word low, which was black in our original artwork, now appears very low here. And as we turn it around, you can see it's so dark, it actually sticks out the bottom of this object. So this is a very, very quick way of creating actually quite a complex object simply by using light and dark to define what's high and what's low. Once we've created the object, of course, we can continue to modify it. So for example, we have the default height and depth of this. Well, by making the object itself less tall, we can scale it and we can now change that relativity. We can bring it up and down by making the object taller and shorter, then we're adjusting the difference between the height and the depth of it. Interestingly, although we can take it down so it's completely flat, we can't take it any further the other way, so we can't make low high and vice versa. Now, of course, we used the base of this, the two words high and low, to make the basis of our object. What we can do is now open up that texture, let's make this smaller, and we can color this if we want. So, for example, we could select all the letters of the word high, and we can choose a color to fill them with. Let's use Alt Delete to fill that selection with a foreground color. And now when we save, we can see that color reflected back in our artwork. Similarly, we can do the same with the word low. And let's give that a bright color since it's so recessed. Fill it with the color, save, and there it is. So once we've made the object, we can continue to adjust the textures and to work on the object and to customize it, change it as much as we like. We can still, of course, move it around, view it from any angle. What we can also do here is to adjust the depth map. So if we open this up, and let's reduce it, this is still determining what's high and what's low in this object. So if, for example, we now select the letter O in this depth map, and we fill this with white, when we now save this PSD, it'll bring that O forwards to be the same height as the word high. So when you're creating these depth maps, you don't need to get it exactly right first off. You can always go back, modify it, adjust it, and get it how you want later. If you decide the edges are too crisp, well, that's quite simple. We could go to the filter menu and choose blur and Gaussian blur. And let's apply quite a lot of blur to this. We've got a 10 pixel blur. When we now save it again, it'll save that into our object. What happens now is we get much, much smoother edges. As we move it around, you can see that 10 pixel blur actually gave us a 10 pixel width of the edge of the lettering. And that produces a much, much smoother result than the very straight edges we had before with no blur on it. The depth map is a very interesting area of Photoshop 3D modeling. It's very easy to work with, and it's well worth experimenting with. Have a play with it. You can't break it. So far in this tutorial, we've looked at the basics of building 3D layers from primitive objects. From simple objects, we can create postcards. We can use depth maps to create these quite complicated views. Next time, we'll see how we can create far more custom objects directly in Photoshop.